So when it comes to discoveries, Antarctica ranks up there for me as far as the most fascinating and unbelievable things we have found. I love it. So apparently they got some new things we need to check out. Let's go. Number 20. Hyper-resistant bacteria. Antarctica is home to the most hardy creatures on the planet. After all, this region has among the most extreme environments on Earth. But this is definitely an organism that researchers didn't expect to find in Antarctica. Hyper-resistant bacteria. Researchers from the University of Chile discovered bacteria with the unbelievable ability to resist antibiotics and antimicrobials. This means that unlike bacteria we usually encounter, these microorganisms cannot be eliminated easily. Researchers believe that this ability can further spread beyond the polar regions. While this discovery sounds like a cause for worry, scientists assure that this isn't an immediate threat. However, it does raise concerns about future global human health risks especially if Antarctica continues to face challenges from the climate crisis and environmental damage. After all, if the climate continues to become warmer, ice will melt and these bacteria will soon easily spread. Now remember, antibiotic resistance usually happens due to misuse and overuse of antibiotics. But in this case, it seems these bacteria evolved these resistance mechanisms naturally. It appears that the harsh environment of Antarctica became the perfect developing ground for these microorganisms. Again, we don't need to panic. At least, not yet. Before we... Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> I'm not too happy about hearing that, me personally. When you tell me there's something that we can't get rid of, but it's not a threat right now. Right now. You say that now because there's so much unknown about it. No. <laughs> no, I don't like that, bro. At some point, we may need to get rid of this thing, and then we can't. That's the scary part about it. That's why I told you, bro, we have to constantly keep an eye out. I do, but I need more people. Keep an eye out on what's going on in Antarctica. Stuff like this needs to be at the top, needs to be on our radar. We go on. Like this video, uh -huh. smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. And they now. talking about the health, possible health rigors. It could, it could potentially lead to, no, no. Now, number 19 enormous crater. In one of their routine aerial research flights, researchers discovered an enormous crater in the eastern region of Antarctica. It was in this location that they found an unusual ring-like structure in the typically flat and featureless ice. It resembled broken icebergs surrounding a mile-wide circular gap in the ice, and there were a few small circular scars nearby. While this might sound like a natural formation, researchers know that this is a bizarre formation. Subsequent research revealed that there's a possibility that a cosmic collision in the area created the crater. One study revealed infrasound, which is basically a low-frequency sound beyond our hearing range in the area. This supports the theory that a meteorite indeed caused the massive crater in the icy landscape. Researchers believe that a massive meteorite the size of a house disintegrated in the atmosphere over the region, and the last bit of it plummeted into the ice sheet, which resulted in this massive crater. Specifically, researchers believe the cosmic object that plummeted in this area might have been between 20 to 35 feet and a staggering 600 to 1,900 tons. This explosion had the same force of a staggering 12,000 tons of TNT, which most likely hammered into the ground at over 29,000 miles per hour. Researchers are now trying to find out whether this meteor is beneath the ice, but no luck so far. Number 18. How does it just... <laughs> this is why I have trust issues right here. Because <laughs> that right there sounds like you're keeping something from me. It's It does. It does. We just, we don't know. We don't know where. No, stop it. Stop it, man. Like, I, I don't know how slow they think I am or we are or what. But they're not going to continue to keep trying to tell us that, oh, they can't find this huge thing or something like that. No way. Mm -hmm. This meteor is beneath the ice, but no luck so far. Number 18. 280 million year old fossilized forest. Antarctica looks like a barren icy wasteland, but did you know that hundreds of millions of years ago, this region was teeming with life? A recent discovery revealed that beneath the icy landscape of Antarctica was once a flourishing forest. 
This was revealed by the fossilized remains of trees found in the area that date back a whopping 280 million years. This discovery has prompted the scientific team to return to this frozen wilderness to unravel the mysteries of how this forest managed to thrive in such extreme conditions. Right. You see, this polar forest existed at a latitude where plants couldn't grow in today's Antarctica. During the Permian period where these trees flourished, Antarctica was much warmer than it is today. It was a world dominated by fern-like plants, like the famous Glossopteris, which grew in swamps that eventually became coal deposits in the Transantarctic Mountains. However, this didn't mean that life in this region was easy. In fact, these trees endured some seriously bizarre conditions. They spent about seven months in total darkness, followed by nearly five months of continuous sunlight. As years passed, the planet warmed even more, leading to a dry, scorching climate over much of Gondwana. This supercontinent included present-day Africa, South America, Arabia, India, Australia, and of course, Antarctica. Now there's just one big question. Why did these trees cease to exist? What prompted them to disappear? If they survived the harsh environment of Antarctica, these trees should have been able to withstand the changes the region underwent. To this day, these questions remain unanswered. Number 17. Hmm. Antarctic Fossil Researchers have recently unearthed this football-sized fossil in Antarctica, and for a while, researchers were clueless about what it is. Remember, millions of years ago, Antarctica wasn't the land that it is today. A long time ago, dinosaurs lived on the frozen continent and swam in its waters. Now, this football-sized fossil could probably be one of their remains. Fortunately, subsequent research revealed the truth behind this fossil. High-powered microscopes at the University of Texas confirmed the researcher's theory that this is a deflated egg. However, the next question that popped into the researcher's mind was, what species laid this egg? You see, this fossil is massive, measuring 11 by 7 inches, making it the second largest egg ever found. Researchers couldn't pinpoint the creature that laid this gigantic egg because they didn't find a skeleton alongside it. To crack the case, they analyzed the size of reptiles and their eggs, concluding that the egg was likely laid by a colossal dinosaur-like reptile, estimated to be at least 20 feet long. Some experts suggest it could have been a mosasaur, a massive ancient sea reptile whose remains have been found nearby, but it's currently impossible for us to know for sure. Even with our inability to determine what dinosaur species laid this egg, this discovery still sheds light on the dinosaurs. You see, this deflated egg revealed that instead of hard eggs, some dinosaurs laid soft-shelled eggs. Oh. Moreover, recent research by the American Museum of Natural History suggests that dinosaurs might have laid soft-shelled eggs before transitioning to hard-shelled ones. Who would have thought that the icy landscape of Antarctica would reveal key information about these extinct reptiles? Number six. Hey, you. You, sir. The one who discovered that egg? You. I'm talking to you. Don't get any ideas, fam. Don't. Y'all know what he's thinking, or, who, or whoever discovered it is thinking. We can see it coming. Don't know what it is, want to figure it out, want to possibly try to see if you can maybe extract some DNA, and then do what? Get the idea to what? Possibly try to bring this thing back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get any ideas, man. And And the more I think about it, I already think they're actively doing that now, trying to figure out if they can bring a dinosaur back. You know, they're going to start with something. If they haven't already, they're going to start with something they feel like is innocent, not harmful, wasn't like a, a, a mean, ferocious type dinosaur, one that was probably cute, cuddly, harmless. That's the kind they're going to try to bring back first, try to get everybody warm to the idea of possibly bringing back these giant dinosaurs back. I'm telling you, man, anytime I see something with an egg and hear that they can't figure it out, I start thinking, oh, yeah, after they figure out what's the next step. Hmm? 16. A Waterfall with Crimson Water Located in Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys is the Taylor Glacier, and it's in this glacier that the blood falls can be found. Just as its name suggests, the water emerging from this glacier appears to be a deep blood-red hue, a stark contrast to the surrounding white ice. The source of this mysterious red liquid is a subglacial lake beneath a glacier known as Lake Bonnie. Unlike any other body on Earth, Lake Bonnie is a hypersaline and ferrous-rich environment. 
where the water is incredibly salty and contains high iron concentrations. This unique combination creates the ideal conditions for this bizarre phenomenon. When the iron-rich waters of Lake Bonnie come into contact with oxygen from the atmosphere as they emerge from beneath a glacier, a chemical reaction occurs. This reaction causes the iron to oxidize or rust, similar to when iron objects are exposed to air. The rusting process gives the water its distinct reddish hue, and this iron-rich water flows out from under the glacier, creating a striking blood appearance. Number 15. Yeah, it looked like it's bleeding to me. I was going to say that until he said striking blood appearance. That thing looks like it's bleeding to me, like something big up under there is dead, and it's just been bleeding for thousands of years, and it's finally starting to like, pool outside of the, uh, out of the ice. That's what it looked like. Ugh. Or maybe something volcanic. All white humpback whale. Meet Migaloo, the world's Migaloo. only known all white humpback whale. Scientists estimate that Migaloo is about 30 years old, although since whales don't have teeth, it's pretty tricky to figure out their exact age. Migaloo's age, however, has already been confirmed. Migaloo is confirmed to be a male, further proven by his melodious singing, a characteristic attributed to male whale species, and his skin samples also confirm this. But what makes Migaloo truly unique is his skin color. As I've mentioned, Migaloo is the only white whale. But instead of using the term albino, scientists use the term hypopigmented for Migaloo, signifying a loss of skin color rather than full-blown albinism. It's a rare condition, and Migaloo remains a one-of-a-kind specimen to this day. Number 14. Antarctic Scale Worm Okay, I don't know about you, but this creature makes me feel uncomfortable. Just take a look at it. It looks like something straight out of a nightmare, doesn't it? Look at the way it was able to blend in. You wouldn't even have known it was there. You had to be looking for that and know what that was already. Well, just take a look at it. It looks like something straight out of a nightmare, doesn't it? Fortunately, this creature is only found in the Southern Ocean, near the cold waters of Antarctica. This creature is scientifically known as Eulagisca giganti, or simply the Antarctic scale worm. These creatures can grow over 20 centimeters long and up to 10 centimeters wide, that's roughly the size of a squirrel. These creatures are named after the distinct scales that cover their bodies. Along its dorsal side, the worm features 15 pairs of protective scales that function like armor, reminiscent of how land-based armadillos have protective shells. These scales also aid in camouflaging the worm with the ocean floor, especially when they bury themselves in sediment. And surprise, surprise, the hunting habits of this creature are as horrifying as their appearance. You see, see, you know how they talked about the meteor hitting the water earlier, uh, 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 possibly? Remember that? What type of things could have showed up on there? Stuff like this. That's the, I'm t that's the theory for me, man, that I've been saying now and that I, I truly believe and stand behind is that a lot of this stuff that ends up in the water, stuff that we're discovering, different things like that, could have came here from another planet via meteor or something like that. That's what I'm saying, possibly. See its head? Well, both of its ends look like it can be its head at first. However, one end of this creature opens up to reveal a retractable proboscis, the tubular mouth part. This proboscis is equipped with formidable jaws and teeth designed for biting and tearing into the flesh of fish and other marine creatures. Once it's finished feeding, the proboscis undergoes a curious transformation, turning inside out, folding up, and vanishing into the worm's body. But again, there's no need for you to worry since these creatures reside at depths ranging from 1,600 to 2,000 feet. And even if these happen to encounter humans, it's most likely that these guys would remain concealed on the ocean floor and wait for unsuspecting prey instead. Number 13. Giant Sea Spider Since we're already talking about a bizarre creature that lurks within the dark waters of Antarctica, here's another. After all, you can never have enough nightmare fuel, right? In the cold waters of the South Pole is the giant sea spider, an underwater spider that grows up to a staggering 20 inches. These creatures are mostly legs, and that's understandable because that's where the vital organs of these creatures are. They really look like the size of snow crab legs these days, man. <laughs> is it just me or anybody else think snow crab legs are getting smaller and smaller? You know what I mean? It used to be pretty big, and you get a lot of meat and stuff out of there, but now their legs look like that. This is exactly what it reminds me of. 
really don't have much body to begin with. Now here's where it gets freaky. You see, these creatures have holes in their legs, which allows them to breathe, and unfortunately, oh. this body part also allows them to adapt to warmer waters. Luckily, these giant sea spiders aren't too keen on moving to warmer waters just yet. Don't get me wrong though, there are sea spiders in warm waters, but at least they're not as big as the ones in Antarctica. Number 12. Yeah, that's an alien too, by the way. Lake Vostok. What you're looking at is Lake Vostok, one of the most intriguing features of Antarctica. Now this might be surprising, but Lake Vostok is the largest among almost 400 known subglacial lakes in the region. This lake is buried under more than two miles of ice, making it one of the most isolated and mysterious bodies of water on Earth. You see, this lake formed over 20 million years ago when Antarctica was drifting away from other continents. As it moved south, temperatures dropped and this colossal ice sheet formed. This means that this lake has been sealed for a long time, leading scientists to believe that this icy abyss might be home to life forms unlike anything we've seen before. There has been ongoing research in this area since its discovery. Since this lake was originally encased in miles deep ice, researchers needed to carefully drill into the Antarctic glacier using clean drills to avoid contamination. So far, we've discovered evidence of microbes in this lake, and it's believed that there are plenty of unknown bacteria and eukaryotes in the lake's waters. However, Further research is needed to confirm what other mysterious creatures lurk in this lake. Number 11. Hitler's Secret Base During the early 20th century, Antarctica was mostly unexplored. This remains true to this day, but at the time, various nations were interested in the scientific possibilities the continent had. As one of the most powerful countries at the time, Germany wanted to get their hands on Antarctic territory, not only for scientific reasons, but also for acquiring resources. And so, between 1938 and 1939, the country organized an expedition to the icy region with the official purpose of the pursuit of scientific information. However, many believe that this wasn't the case at all. Today, countless conspiracy theories claim that the Germans explored Antarctica solely to establish a hidden base in the isolated region. Many believe- Y'all wonder why there's so many theories surrounding that. Look how far it dates back. And look what they were trying to do. So you want to sit here and tell me the government isn't possibly doing that now? That's why I try to keep my eye on Antarctica, bro. Because it's not, we don't frequent there enough to where people would pick up on or happen to spot something or see something and be like, oh, I need to alert the media, the news media to come out here and pay attention to this. No, we're not there. And they know that. So that's why I, I always try to keep an eye out, man. Look how far this dates back and what they were trying to do back then. You think they stopped? Not hardly. Believe that the Nazis, including Adolf Hitler, created a safe haven in Antarctica as a place to seek refuge after the Second World War. This idea is often linked to other conspiracy theories about the survival of high-ranking Nazi officials and the development of advanced technology, such as flying saucers. Although we have yet to find convincing evidence about the existence of this secret base, this conspiracy continues to perpetuate. What's your take on this theory? Do you think there may be a secret military base in Antarctica? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Number 10. Hairy Crabs We've seen a worm that looked like it came straight out of a nightmare. We've seen giant sea spiders that we wouldn't want to get near. I'll show you yet another bizarre creature lurking in the waters of Antarctica. The Hoff Crab The Hoff Crab is a hairy crab discovered in the icy waters of the Antarctic. This creature just might be the hairiest creature in the ocean. Mm. The entire belly of this crab is covered in CT, which are long and thin, resembling hair or bristles. This helps the crab to brush up and harbor bacteria on a large scale. This bacteria would then serve as the crab's source of food. Yep, these hairy-chested creatures have an entire farm attached to their bodies. Aside from their hairy chests, this unique behavior and diet make them among the most intriguing creatures in the Antarctic. Number 9. Feisty Fungi Fungi are among the most stubborn creatures on the planet. Once they find the right conditions to thrive, it's tough to get rid of it. With their hardiness, perhaps it wasn't a complete surprise when researchers found a fungus species thriving in the huts left behind in Antarctica. This structure dates back to the early 1900s when explorers ventured into the uncharted regions of the South Pole. Until recent research, no one expected there to be a fungus species native to Antarctica. 
After all, it's icy and treeless. It's nothing compared to the lush, humid, and thriving rainforest and jungles found in tropical countries. I guess it's true that life always finds a way. We've only recently discovered these new fungi species, and so researchers are keen on protecting not only the preserved hut in Antarctica, but these new emerging microorganisms as well. Number 8. Interesting to see Pyramid-shaped mountain. Imagine stumbling upon a mountain in Antarctica, perfectly shaped like a pyramid. It's easy to believe that there's such a massive undiscovered structure. For those of you who try to downplay when people talk about potential pyramids being in Antarctica. You, did you hear that? They didn't say it was, but potentially there could be. But y'all be making it like people are just delusional when they talk about possible pyramids being in Antarctica. Stop that, please. Sure, in this icy region, since it remains unexplored by humans for the most part. When internet users noticed this pyramid-like structure, numerous theories quickly emerged, suggesting that it might be a man-made construction resembling the pyramids of Egypt, potentially built by an unidentified ancient civilization. But is this possible? This pyramid-shaped peak was found in the Ellsworth mountain range. With its shape and size, it does resemble the great pyramids that still stand in Egypt to this day. Ancient Egyptians undoubtedly created the pyramids, but it's hard to believe that a civilization completed such a feat in an almost desolate location like Antarctica. Scientists believe that this structure is a pyramidal-shaped mountain that naturally formed throughout the years. Experts argue that pyramidal-shaped mountains are actually quite common in glaciated areas. They're created when glaciers shape the land, resulting in peaks that resemble pyramids. But of course, others aren't convinced. To this day, there's still ongoing debate as to whether there really are traces of a previously undiscovered civilization in Antarctica. So I'll let you be the judge. Number 7. Tons of Methane It seems that Antarctica only seems empty and desolate on the surface. After all, this region has been hiding a vast methane deposit for the longest time. Recently, scientists have stumbled upon a methane seep in the South Pole, right beneath the Antarctic seabed. But why exactly is this a cause of concern? You see, methane is a potent greenhouse gas, usually gobbled up by microbes before it reaches the atmosphere. Unfortunately, these microbes decreased, allowing methane to be released. Antarctica's icy depths are thought to hide massive amounts of methane beneath the seabed. As the planet warms due to the climate crisis, these frozen stores could start leaking, posing a big problem not only for creatures residing in the Antarctic region, but also for everyone else around the world. Now, why this new methane seep emerged is still a puzzle. It's probably not because of global warming, as the region where it was discovered hasn't warmed significantly yet. But this revelation throws a curveball at climate models that didn't account for this delay in microbial methane consumption. Today, researchers are on the move to learn more about this abundance of methane to hopefully curb its effect on our planet. Number six. Yeah, what, what is the dangers? Of, of too much what what can it do to the planet i know what it can do to us you know what i mean for us i know the dangers for us but the planet wise an overabundance of methane means what in in terms of even long-term effects what would that potentially mean and they said it's not due to the warming of the planet they're saying it's not potentially warm in the area of this new found methane leak so i gotta find out and figure out what could that mean for the planet though hmm interesting though but had we not heard that here they'd have tried to say oh that was they'd have tied that into global warming as well wouldn't they i know they would giant hole you're looking at antarctica in an aerial view notice something different right in the middle where ice is supposed to be is a hole and while that might look small this gap is the size of Kansas. This isn't a common sight, and it had scientists scratching their heads. But after recent studies, scientists believe they finally cracked the case. Before the proper investigation, scientists had no idea what this hole might be. Another meteorite crater? A simple crack in the ice? Or something else? However, recent research revealed that this hole was most likely made by a powerful cyclone that spun up in Antarctica's Weddell Sea. It started as a relatively small hole, but it expanded rapidly, covering an area larger than Ireland. Now here's the science behind it. The Modrai Seamount, which is like the Himalayas but underwater, plays a role. It pushes warm, dense, salty water from the seafloor closer to the surface. 
When a storm clears away the sea ice, this warm water mixes with the cooler surface water, preventing it from freezing. That's the reason for this water gap in this supposedly large plain of ice. Number 5. Important Meteorite Antarctica, the icy and remote continent, might not be the easiest place to work, but it's a gold mine for meteorite hunters. Why? Mm. Well, it's not just the dry climate that keeps these space rocks well preserved. The stunning landscape and glaciers play a role, too. A recent expedition returned from Antarctica with five new meteorites, including a space rock weighing 16.7 pounds. Now, you're probably thinking that this size doesn't really sound like much compared to other meteorites. But you see, the size of a meteorite isn't the only thing that makes it valuable. You see, the value of a meteor actually relies more on its contents and composition than its size. Contents. A space rock can be massive, but still considered less valuable than a tiny one with a rare and previously unknown composition. The newly discovered meteorites were immediately transferred to a research facility, where scientists studied them and learned more about their composition. You can only imagine the information these rocks might reveal. Number 4. Antarctica's Volcanic Ice Caves as I've mentioned earlier, now this is what I'm worried about. Antarctica might look like a barren, desolate land, but it actually holds a lot of secrets. One particular region that hides plenty of Antarctica's wildlife is Mount Erebus, known as the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Within its icy caves is a vast array of microorganisms. You see, Mount Erebus formed over a million years ago. This 12,000 foot high volcano is a beacon of heat in Antarctica's frozen expanse and its warmth provides solace to the microorganisms trying to survive in the South Pole. These ice caves are like secret oases amid the icy desert. Some reach temperatures higher than 20 degrees Celsius, that's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is enough to provide a haven for diverse life forms. Even though most caves remain shrouded in darkness due to thick ice, a few allow light to filter through. Although the DNA samples offer tantalizing hints, the next step is to find living organisms in these volcanic realms. This task is far from easy, as accessing these geothermal sites is an arduous adventure in itself. Researchers endure harsh weather conditions, extreme cold, and the unpredictability of Antarctica. That is why, to this day, we have yet to identify the creatures that reside in this region. But who knows? In time, we might be able to identify the most amazing animals that manage to thrive in this region. Number I want to know what's going to happen if one of those really, really erupt, like we would see on the news from some other, some other place. Like if that one there decides to like give us a category, whatever the highest category would be for a hurricane or whatever, if it decides to go off and, and just destroy things, what does that do for Antarctica? How does that assist in global warming? What could that potentially mean? And I wonder, would that signify or signal to us that the poles are starting to shift? I wonder about that as well. Number three, an abundance of oil. See, man, I won't just be out here, just be, no, I'd be really trying to figure out, man. I'm worried about the planet, seriously. I've been this region. Number three, an abundance of oil. Aside from life, did you know that Antarctica also hides untapped oil reservoirs? It may come as a surprise, but Antarctica possesses substantial oil reserves. Geological surveys estimate that this icy continent may contain more than 200 billion barrels of oil, rivaling some of the world's top oil-producing regions. These reserves are primarily located in the sedimentary basins along the continental margins, a geological setup similar to many well-known oil-producing regions around the globe. So if Antarctica is sitting on such an enormous oil bonanza, why has it not become a focal point for oil extraction like the Middle East or North America? You might already know the answer. You see, there is a treaty that binds countries regarding this continent. Signed in 1959 and entering into force in 1961, the Antarctic Treaty designates Antarctica as a scientific preserve, placing a ban on any commercial mineral resource activity, including oil extraction. The treaty was motivated by a desire to protect the fragile Antarctic environment from the potential detrimental effects of industrialization and resource exploitation. Hopefully, this treaty will be honored for years to come. Number two. I agree, man. I think the weather conditions keeps this treaty like, like going, you know what I mean? Continues to allow people to respect it. They don't want to deal with those harsh weather conditions. That 
I think alone. If it would have been anywhere else though, they'd have been broke that treaty. The Mystery of Flight 901 On November 28, 1979, Flight 901 began its routine sightseeing flight over Antarctica. However, this ordinary trip turned into a nightmare. After departing from Auckland International Airport, the aircraft collided with Mount Erebus, sending the plane crashing down. All 257 people on board died. The crash was so fatal that not a single soul survived. For years, the mystery of the accident has puzzled not only the victims' families, but researchers from all over the world. It was here that Gordon Vett, a pilot from New Zealand, made it his mission to analyze and find out the reason behind the tragic incident. Initially, researchers thought that a simple miscommunication had caused the disaster. But after years of research, Vett was convinced that a bizarre phenomenon known as whiteout caused the pilots to miscalculate their route. This phenomenon allegedly eliminates visual borders, which causes the pilot not to see the big mountain in front of the plane. And so, thanks to his dedicated research, much of the mystery of Flight 901 is solved. And now it's time for today's topic. Scientists and NASA don't understand what's happening in Antarctica because of this newly discovered feature, previously unknown ice walls. Among the many secrets of this region are these perplexing ice walls. Stretching across vast distances, they exhibit remarkable symmetry and geometry. A stark oh, here come the conspiracy theories. If y'all haven't heard about the ice wall conspiracy theories, man, seriously, go check them out, bro. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You may go down a rabbit hole. But now hearing that, I'm going to go back and listen to some more into those theories because I was giving kind of a lot of pushback, but it's a lot of people out there talking about the ice walls. Contrast to the rugged terrain that surrounds them. These walls allegedly look incredibly different compared to Antarctica's usual landscape, and even researchers don't know what to make of them. Rumors and theories have been circulating on the internet and the scientific community, but to this day, the truth behind these allegedly perfect ice walls remains unknown. Could these ice walls be remnants of ancient glacial processes? Perhaps they're the outcomes of a geological phenomenon that remains undiscovered, or maybe these walls contain the secrets of an ancient civilization that we have yet to discover. Even NASA, with its powerful satellites and advanced technology, has found itself at a loss when it comes to these enigmatic ice walls. Number 1. 46,000-Year-Old Worm In the frozen depths of Siberia, scientists stumbled upon a tiny roundworm that defied time itself. You see, this tiny creature managed to thaw out after being frozen for 46,000 years back when Neanderthals roamed the Earth. Yep, it's like this worm got stuck in a cryo chamber and came back to life tens of thousands of years what? after being frozen. Scientists explained that this worm underwent a state known as cryptobiosis. In this state, this worm didn't eat and had no metabolism. This creature basically managed to literally pause its life. Its entire body shut down, but not enough to render it dead. We knew some nematodes could handle suspended animation in freezing conditions, but 46,000 years? That was unheard of until the discovery of this curious specimen. Using radiocarbon dating, scientists confirmed the soil's age as 46,000 years. That's ancient. The nematode, named Panagloramus colimaensis, was buried about 130 feet deep in the permafrost. When thawed in the lab, it sprang back to life and even started to multiply. This goes to show just how resilient some organisms are on our planet. But that statement might make you wonder just how a single worm managed to multiply. Well, nature decided to let this worm survive being frozen for over 46,000 years, so I guess it also blessed this creature with the capability of reproducing asexually, which means it doesn't need a partner to reproduce. In just 8 to 12 days, this nematode is capable of releasing new creatures of its own kind. Who knew that half of these things even exist? That is very telling. That discovery alone is very telling. I'm going to tell you why, right? Think about what we've been trying to do in space. Find planets that are habitable. We've looked at all kinds of planets, right? We've even been studying Pluto, right? The dwarf planet. And we look at it and we say, ah, oh, icy planet, probably not no life there. Maybe no life is able to be sustained there. What did that worm just show you? That you still need to look into this planet for potential life. 
because this worm just survived for 46,000 years. This is groundbreaking. This is game changing. Because this says about life, like in different places where we may not think to look, there could be potential life there. Oh, this is crazy. See, this is why you got to pay attention to certain places like Antarctica, bro. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you thought and stick around and stay tuned, man, for more exciting discoveries. Till next one, I'm gone, man.